Hi everyone and welcome to the first Gareth Lewis Fly Fishing YouTube video. Uh, it is April, the start of April, and as we're in spring, uh, the rivers I fish in South Wales in the UK uh, are seeing uh, quite um, an abundance of granum. So today I'm going to be tying uh, the granum emerger. Uh, the granum uh, are a member of, a, of the caddis or trichoptera family uh, and are among the first of the UK's major hatches uh, which take place uh, right around now. So this video should be uh, fairly uh, apt. Uh, the hatches themselves can be can be huge, right? So uh, the, to, to the point where it feels like pretty much every granum on the river um, is, is wanting to crawl down your uh, down your neck or across your waders or under your glasses, uh, they really do get everywhere. Uh, and of course, due to the uh, the temperate sort of uh, winds and the weather that we get at the moment in spring, uh, I think it can be quite blustery, so they do get blown around a lot. Um, <clears throat> so likewise, due to the, the, the size of the hatches, the trout kind of go a little crazy. Um, we need to remember that this is kind of the first hatch or one of the first hatch uh, hatches of the, of the year. Um, but not really had much success with uh, the adults themselves. I mean, we talk about the swarms of, of, of granum and we don't really see um, a lot of success to actual adult imitation. So those egg layers, that sort of stuff. I think the, the one thing we forget as anglers is, uh, you know, just because we see a rise, it's not always uh, uh, the adult itself. More often than not, the fish are actually taking the flies subsurface. So we're seeing bulged style uh, rises um, or the sip sort of rises that indicate really they're taking either subsurface or right underneath or even in the film. OK, so quite often than not, I mean, when the hatch is kicking off itself, uh, we'll see lots of rising fish and we'll also see uh, a huge number of, of shucks in the water, actual emerging uh, granum uh, and quite and it's quite easy to, to pick these up and actually have them hatch from your hand. It, it is really a, a wonderful hatch. So before we look at the actual uh, tying itself, we I kind of want to talk about the triggers that we're trying to incorporate into this imitation. So um, first of all, we're, we'll we'll tie a slightly bulbous body and we'll come on to all of these points uh, in a moment. So um, and when I say bulbous, I mean not the sort of carrot slim sort of shape that we tie when we tie in a, uh, either an ephemera um, or an olive imitation. Uh, we're going to use a dirty or washed out sort of yellowy olive green sort of body, um, which sort of matches the natural. Um, and we're going to further intensify that drabness of the body then by utilizing uh, an underbody or, or a black thread body. The naturals have a very sort of dark sort of ribbing or segmentation. So we're going to use a dark black, uh, simple thread rib. Uh, and the thorax itself then is kind of a mix of, um, obviously there's a lot of legginess going on there, being a caddis emerger, so we're going to utilize um, the semp fly sparkle dubbing um, throughout this body, but um, uh, for the thorax we'll use the sparkle dubbing as well, and that's going to be a sort of a mix of the black, uh, the dirty sort of yellowy orange, uh, yellowy olive, and there's going to be uh, a slight orange in there as well that the, the, the naturals um, have as well. So. So in today's tying then, we're going to be using uh, the Partridge of Redditch uh, Grub Shrimp Down Eye, or the K4A. Um, a great, great strong um, hook pattern. Um, and as you can see, it's a, it's a lovely bronze color. This is a barbed version, but I crimped the barb down just before I put it in the vise. Uh, but it's a very strong hook. And I tend to use this on a lot of my uh, emerger patterns, purely for the, uh, the strength uh, of the wire and the gauge. Um, it's a very strong um, hook itself, um, and as I fish a lot on the usk, uh, the chances of of a larger fish are very um, realistic. So it's um, it, it's a it's a really um, reliable hook pattern for that. Um, the thread I'm going to be using is a Semperfly Nano Silk uh, in 18 alt or 30 denier, um, and that's in black. And then, as I mentioned, the body will be using Semperfly Sparkle dubbing. Um, this is a this is a synthetic um, dubbing material, um, so it adds a, quite a nice bit of translucency to the body, which which is shown on the uh, on the natural. 
the thorax cover is optional. Um, I like to keep things simple here. Um, the thorax cover is a Semperfly Swiss straw synthetic synthetic raffia raffia. Um, and underneath that, as the thorax, we'll be using more sparkle dubbing. And this is a pinch mix of light olive, black, and orange. Um, the wing then is CDC um, and four uh, actual feathers um, of natural CDC, um, which is going to give us our buoyancy. And also, um, if, even from a distance, you can kind of pick these, these out as well. So without further ado, let's get into the tying itself. So. Uh, we're just going to enter our thread uh, onto the hook. A couple of turns just to secure that down and we will snip off. So I'm just going to bring my thread back to the front. Uh, and this is where um, I'm going to tie in my pre-prepared CTC feathers. So hopefully you can see from the camera um, I've prepared these uh, and I've aligned the tips um, and I'm just going to tie those in. So the length of these uh, is kind of dependent on yourself. Obviously the naturals don't have a big wing sticking out the front of them. This is just for the sight and buoyancy. But as a rule of thumb, uh, and just to keep my flies in my box nice and uniform, I'll generally go uh, with the length um, of the hook, okay? Sometimes a little longer if I want a little bit more buoyancy. So we'll just give that a nice couple of turns. I'll just check to see if that's aligned properly and then I'll tie down with a couple of securing wraps. Okay so next uh, as I mentioned we're gonna want some form of taper to the body. I just don't want it um, uniform all the way along so I'm just gonna taper my cut um, and I'll cut at an angle so that we can start catching that down in a nice taper. Okay, we'll just take it down. It doesn't need to go down to the hole uh, around the bend. I'm just gonna move the hook in the vise slightly just to make things a bit easier for me. Um, and what I'm gonna do, as I say, the rib we're gonna tie in next, and this is uh, the Semperfly, it can be any black thread, okay? But this is the Semperfly waxed uh, or classic waxed thread in a 12 aught. Um, if you're going to be using something thicker like an 8 door, then obviously we're looking for a rib uh, with an appropriate thickness. Okay, the naturals have quite, um, they don't have many segments, they're quite thick and bulbous. So, okay, so what I've done, I've doubled up uh, the thread um, twice. So, effectively, what I've got is four strands. Okay, so I'm just going to tie that in. I'm just going to lift that under the thread. I'm just going to Hold that down. Uh, I'm just going to tie that in with my thread towards the thorax. And I'm going to take the thread all the way back down. Park the rib somewhere out of the way. And that's ready for later. Uh, next up uh, is the Semperfly Sparkle dubbing. Uh, this is the light olive, so we're going to be tying. The, uh, the the abdomen or the body. Okay, so I'm just going to take a pinch. Um, and now what we discussed earlier is we don't want the sort of olive or ephemera style uh, carrot shape. We want um, almost um, a fat butt on this uh, or fat abdomen rather on this on this fly. So I'm just going to catch in the dubbing a second. I'm just going to pull tight and twist. For my dubbing loop. I just bring that forward. I'm checking the, the thickness as I go. Let me just take that off for a second. It's a bit messy. Can't have messy flies. It grates me. That's better. So I'm just going to bring this forward. I'm also going to give this a trim in a moment as well. So again, I'll keep as I see fit. Okay, so in the middle of this uh, abdomen, or the middle of the body, we want it slightly thicker. Then unlike the ephemera patterns, we're going to want to thin this off or tighten it up as we get to 
and the thorax. So a couple more wraps here. Now, the good thing about using the black underbody is when this gets wet, this translucent body uh, is really going to come into its own. And this is where this sparkle dubbing really works quite nicely. So let me just tidy this up. There we go. We'll just make that a bit thinner as we come to the thorax itself. Okay, that's good. So we're going to tidy that up in a moment. We don't want too much of a mess there because if there's loads of fibers uh, flicking everywhere, then that, that's going to impede uh, the ability for that uh, body or abdomen to, to effect effectively sink. So next I'm going to bring the, the strands of thread up. Okay, um, and I'm actually going to twist this, right? So I don't want it to be too thick. Now, as I say, if you're using a thick thread, then that's fine, all right? Like eight or even six or uh, that, that'll that lend itself quite well to uh, this thick rib. But if you haven't got that, then no problem. Do what I'm doing um, and just use 12 volt, for example, and then twist it. Okay, so you've effectively got multi strands and you can see the thickness there compared to uh, the thread, uh, which is hanging there in the abdomen. So I'm just going to bring this forward what I've done I've twisted it um, and then I've put it in hackle pliers just so I've got a little bit more control um, and I'm just going to bring this forward just to create the segments on this caddis okay there we go I'll just tie that off lock that in and then moment of truth let go of the hackle pliers let me just lock that in. And finally, snip off. Okay, so before we get onto the, the thorax itself, I just want to give this body a little clean up, okay? So as I mentioned, we don't want too many um, fibers sticking out uh, because that'll just prevent this pattern from sitting correctly. Uh, in the surface film and it, instead it'll just sort of sit on it which isn't what we want so I'm just giving it a little trim just to remove any sort of fibers which might be sticking out if you got some left over then then no problem um, if anything that gives it more life almost um, fairly happy with that okay so I just move this uh, in the vise once again. Let's make that a little easier. Okay, so next up, before we tie the, the thorax in or the thorax material, um, we'll tie in the thorax cover. And as I mentioned, this isn't uh, this is an optional. Okay, you, you haven't got to have it. Obviously, this this will sit towards the top uh, of the pattern, uh, which really the trout isn't going to really see. Okay, all, all the thorax is going to require is a little bugginess. Uh, to give any sort of a indication of legs even. Again, we're looking for that facsimile rather than uh, specifics. So I will, uh, and for this I'm using again, it's a, a sample fly product. Um, it's, a, it's a synthetic plastic essentially, um, but it's great for thorax covers. Um, if you can see it there, it's a, it's a black um, cover. Okay, so what I've done, I've, I've selected a thickness, uh, double the size, and effectively uh, folded it over, which is going to give us a bit of security as well if, if we get a nick from a, uh, a trout tooth, for example. So I'm just going to tie it in nice and loosely and just make sure that's aligned on the top. And as I'm going back, I'm just checking that it's sitting in the right place. Okay, now what I'm going to do is bring this forward towards the top of the wing. I'm just going to park that there a second. The thorax uh, dubbing itself then again, uh, the, the sparkle dubbing, um, this is a pinch mix of the light olive, uh, the black and the orange. Okay, So the natural pupa or emerger um, will have a slight tinge of, of orange. Some patterns are quite strong in how much orange they use. Um, I don't go crazy. Again, I just keep things simple, um, thinking that 
you know the facsimile or the rough approximation of what we're trying to imitate um, has the right shape and size color for me um, personally is a, is a secondary concern but you know we all like the look of a nice fly that gives us confidence when we're fishing it so by all means if you want more orange then uh, don't let me stop you so as I say, we've got a bit of a, a messy mix there. Hopefully you can see the, 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 the colours in there. So we've got the light olive, exactly the same as the body. Um, we've got a pinch of black and some orange as well. Now, um, rather than bulging this up and tying from the base uh, or the rear rather of uh, the thorax, I'm going to give two layers of this, of this dubbing. Uh, so I'm going to start at the forward, uh, wrap back, Just going to tie that in just give it a little twist just to tighten the dubbing and then we're going to nice touch and turns tightening if you need to as you go to the rear so you can see there that we've got quite an eclectic mix of colors there again just as the as the natural does so i'm going to bring my thread forward I'm using nano silk, so this is just going to disappear when we tie that uh, that Swiss straw in. I'm just going to check that's that's completely covered. And I'm going to bring this thorax cover forward. Okay, so what we want, if you can see there, is a good covering uh, on the thorax. Okay, so let me just pull that back so it's easier for myself. Okay, now we're going to do a loose wrap over the top. So if we pull straight up, it's going to sort of... Um, wrap this thorax cover around uh, the shank, which we don't want. So I'm just going to lo loose, loose wrap and let it hang over. Then I'm going to put my tension on and pull up. Okay, so it's going to lock that in place exactly as we see it there. Now, as this is nano silk, as I say, we're, we're talking about very, very little buildup. It's the 18 ore as well. So we'll just give it three wraps and that will tighten that down. If you're new to nano silk, be very careful not to pull too tight as it probably will cut through uh, the materials. So we've done three wraps. I'm keeping the tension on. And I'm just going to bring everything up and out of the way. So I've got plenty of room to create my head, which we're not really creating a head as such. We're just creating a base to kick that wing up slightly. And then finally, if I can find my finish tool, I will give this a whip finish. And just a quick one for security. Not that you really need it with that thread at all, but... Okay, I'm just going to snip off. We've still got the thorax cover to, to snip a second. Let me just get this wing out of the way. Okay, so we're just going to essentially bring this forward, place our uh, scissor blade in front of it, or behind it rather, and then snip. Okay, so hopefully you can, you can see that. Okay, and there we go. We're almost there. So I'm just going to finish up and just continue giving that a little bit of a trim on the thorax for oh sorry for on the abdomen but for the thorax itself what I'm looking to do is just pick out a few uh, fibers nothing too crazy nothing too mad only a few either side again we want that to drift nice and naturally some uh, synthetic fibers can be quite long that's fine I'd rather prefer them uh, too long um, so what we're going to do is just check the length on those um, and as I only really sort of want uh, an approximation of legs we're just going to give these a quick trim I don't want too long a fiber and that's it I think so what I've tried to effectively create here is or, or rather um, tie here is a simple granum emerger okay it hasn't got to be uh specific to the point where it matches the natural perfectly okay uh, remember these hatch in huge quantities so the trout are expecting to see them and such so if you can match the drift and the presentation of this pattern with a basic emerger style pattern such as this one if you like then i can't guarantee you'll get a fish uh, but you'll certainly increase your chances of doing that okay um, again presentation over pattern is something that um, i certainly live by color is secondary um, size silhouette shape that's what i sort of look for um, 
and I believe that this pattern does that quite nicely. So I uh, hopefully uh, hopefully you've enjoyed uh, the first fly tying video. Uh, it's the first one I've done, so please go uh, gentle. Um, but hopefully you've enjoyed it, and hopefully you can uh, take something away. So thank you, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.